Hey guys, what is going on? This is Larknock1, and... <laughs> Where have I been? I don't know! Well, I'm back, and we're gonna play some Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. Um... So it's been a while, mostly academic reasons, uh, and the game has changed a little bit, tiny bit, since I was last here. Uh, namely... The wonder fix, well, fix, uh, that changed some of the wonders, uh, killed my glorious, you know, Xenomalayam. will never be the same. God bless. Um, and it, the addition of starships that came out. Um, so if you see the bottom right here, the My2K symbol, I'm already logged in. But the game now has, it's integratable with um, a 2K account that you can connect to other 2K games. I'm sure they'll find some ways to connect more games in the future. Right now, it seems to be just Starships and Beyond Earth, and that's what I've hooked up. So, I've played Starships fairly extensively. I, I mean, I do have all of the achievements. I actually haven't played it, like, an obscene amount, but, you know, I've played it enough to, like, pretty much capture the experience and understand it. Um, last time I played it, it was more or less one of the easier things. Um, now, Starships. Um, kind of cheap, you know, it's something like, you know, seven bucks around that kind of price range. Um, I, I saw certain bundles where it was literally $2 cheaper to get Beyond Earth with Starships than just Beyond Earth on itself. Um, so I tend to think of it kind of like an expansion pack. Tiny expansion pack. Very small. And we'll go over why. Um, so we're going to boot up the game right now. So I'm going to go into mods. And so I've, we're going to try a few new mods here. So this is a cool mod. Larger Ultimate Units. Um, this is nice. I like my units to be a little bit bigger. Uh, the the ultimate ones namely because they just don't seem to stand out as much so it's a good mod um, you know how the game is balanced though at the moment that it's kind of unlikely that we'll even see the ultimate units truth be told uh, but all right so Apollo Legacy we're going to be rolling with this difficulty again um, just because I realized doing a lot of testing with Apollo that yes I can win Apollo but it requires me to play a certain way that I really just genuinely don't want to play it's like hard focus this don't build military build the minimum amount you need to to get by and it's not the most fun here's a cool mod men of war version 2 i'm not gonna use version 3 because this is actually a prototype version that i got by private messaging the guy who made it very cool guy uh very cool mod um all right let's go next it does require for me to have combat animations on which we're going to be doing so slow combat but fun combat all right so we're gonna be rolling single player and let us set up this game and i'll show you some of the differences they're not on this first screen with sponsors no new sponsors from the map pack or what did you call map pack from starships um but you'll see new options in literally all the other categories um so today i want to show you guys a, a kind of build order that i've been working on um so we're going to be playing as space africa which is easily the best sponsor in the game and that's for very obvious reasons um it used to be that before it was changed that the african union only gave the plus 10 percent food growth in cities while healthy um that's been changed so now it's that in addition to all your cities start with an old earth relic now the old earth relic is usually the very first thing i always build so basically it's just skip the first eight turns of production do whatever else you want um this is incredibly good you can basically get your second build before anybody else. So let's say that the typical build order would be, you know, Old Earth Relic followed by Explorer. You have your second Explorer out when they start building their next one. Hell, you can pump out a third Explorer. Then you just have one more Explorer, just generally more than everyone. And that's basically what I like to use it for. It's also very good because I'm pretty sure these these Old Earth Relics that African Union comes with are maintenance free. The other thing that makes it good, basically there's a ton of reasons why the free Old Earth Relic is insane. Um, is that you get all that culture from the start. You basically get the equivalent culture, like, bonus on top of everybody else just being better than everyone else, solidly uncontested for, like, eight or nine turns. Um, very good. So we're going Africa. Uh, that's the first part of this build. The second part is engineers. Very, very good. So if you notice these two options down here, pioneers and mercenaries. These are two of the new options um, that came with unlocking some of the stuff from starships. Now, I've almost always gone artist universally in the past. I found that engineers can kind of snowball really well um, with some of the production buildings. And it's kind of critical to the build I'm going with right now. 
I'll explain why this is more important going on. All right, in the spacecraft, um, with starships came these two guys, um, supply module and the electromagnetic sensor. Both are actually very, very good. Um, supply module, you literally, it's what it says. You get two resource pods, that's obscene. You bait, it's just like, take 50 science, take 20 culture, just here, take these starting resources. That can be, that can be insanely good, or it can be kind of meh. Um, you can get some bad ones. You know, oh, cool, I got, you know, 80 energy, which is just worse than the fusion reactor, which is already bad. Um, I really wish they, like, doubled or tripled this energy amount. Fusion reactor would be viable. Oh, well. Um, we're going to be rolling with the electromagnetic sensor. Something you can only get from playing starships. Um, it's very good. This thing is very, very good. It's, it's critical to the build I'm going for. Um, which I put together very carefully, and it's a pretty damn good build. Alright, last choice, cargo. The new options were Cryotome, the new Free Virtue, um, and Xeno Management, which just gives you like a like a random unit that's not even that good at anything. I don't know why this is here. Uh, I just genuinely don't know where that's there. Oh well. We're going with the machinery as always, worker. God bless. Um, and let us go to the advanced setup now and make sure everything is as we want it to. We're not going to be playing on Apollo. We're playing on Apollo Legacy because... Yes. Reasons I gave. Um, ta okay. Now the idea here is, do I want to play on Terran or, uh, I believe it's Protean? Is it the Pangea? Um, I'm probably going to go Protean, just because I want it to be a little more difficult. Protean is, in my opinion, the hardest difficulty setting, because you have to deal with everybody. Especially if you spawn in the middle. Um, you just can't diplomatically get out of anything. You can't isolate yourself on a little island and just, like, bombard people from across the sea. Whenever they start to be building wonders, you got to just push through and take land. So it's the hardest difficulty, in my opinion, or map choice. So everything else, let's see, map size standard, map terrain. We're going to randomize this. Uh, I haven't played in Fungal in a very long time. Um, it, it was my least favorite, but, you know, everything kind of just goes up in priority the less you play it. I just want to see Fungal again. Okay other stuff. Um, this all looks pretty standard to me. Um, yep, domination. We're going to disable contact, as always, because I think it's obscenely easy and very easy for the AI, and I just don't want it on. Um, promised land emancipation transcendence, all there. And down here, we're going to disable quick combat. So, the modern working with Men of War version 2 requires you to disable quick combat. And it's going to track some staff and some of our guys, and it's going to be just really cool. So, let's just start our game. See where it plops us down. On the eve of our landing, let us meditate on the Pearl Diver, who saturates his lungs with air before descending into the depths. What waits for us, we cannot know, be it hostility or indifference, but we will gather our strength within and plunge to the surface below. We will not come up for air until we have found what we are searching for, our new home. Gab bless ya, Samatar Jamabare. What a cool guy. Let's start. Oh boy, uh, this looks like a coast spawn. Lots of grassland, that's pretty good. Um, ooh, desert stuff. And that is a desert river. Floodplains over here, that's very, very good. Um, but, where to settle? Where to settle? I don't want to do like a full coast place right here, because it's just bad. You don't want three coast tiles. Bad, bad, bad. Rising Tide might change that. Uh, the DLC that's coming out in a few months. It might make coast tiles actually useful. You know, coastal cities actually valuable. Um, in Civ 5, they were valuable. Not in Beyond Earth. They are not valuable. They don't do anything. Um, they're bad. Why would you want coastal access, especially on a Pangea map? Now, I don't want to drop down on either of these two, which means I really do have to be a coastal city. The question is, how many coastal tiles do I want in direct proximity? Here's one. Um, I'm really thinking this. Uh, the reason is, is if you see these tiles, you know, one of the immediately reactions you want to have about terrain is that desert is bad. That is not a good reaction to have, um, because desert, believe it or not, has the best hill. For example, the Desert Hill River, which you see right here, is the best hill. Uh, that is a three production, two energy hill, and when you get um, your Vivarium, that is a three production, two energy, one food hill. That's the best hill. Um, these hills are still also awesome. It becomes three production, one energy, one food. That's still the best hill. Um, the only bad tile is kind of this desert. 
And your floodplains are amazing. And this is a floatstone tile, so who cares? We can't do anything with it anyways. I'm thinking this is probably the best option, this, this hill right here. It lets us maintain access to all this stuff. And yeah. Let's drop down. And look at that, we got fruit access too. That's a fruit floodplain. That is rare. I have not seen that in a while. That thing upgrades like hell. It's a four food tower off the start of the game. Holy crap. Alright. So, this is the African Union. We are disgustingly overpowered. We start with the, uh, let's just check if it was actually made. It's free, I don't remember. It looks like it. I think it would tell me. Yeah, it looks like it's maintenance free, which is really obscenely good. All right, so first first thing to build. I like explorers. The reason is because it's part of my build that I'm going to find all these little guys, all of these, and I, well, not all of them, but I'm going to go to as many as I can. I'm going to track them down, and I'm going to open them up. I'm going to crack them up, uh, crack them up and look at the goodies inside. And then I will be abusing, not abusing, but you know, using. It's a strategy. I will be using, what am I doing? I'm not in the virtue streak. This guy right here. This guy will be critical to the strategy. It is going to pump me through early game science. And it's like, yeah, I love starting with knowledge. It's my favorite uh, virtue opening tree. And then I might go down either industry or prosperity. Depending on if it ends up that we're playing purity or supremacy or harmony. Depends. Alright. Let's see. Choosing research. This build starts with chemistry. I sometimes like to go ecology as the first start, just because, give me that food. But this build starts chemistry. The reason is, is we have the engineers, so we can build the recycler very quickly. And then we're going to use our science buff to get pioneering like that. We're going to have it so quick. And then we're going to get the trade depot. And then we will just have the highest production possible. Let's grab chemistry, and we where do we want to send this guy? He's in the miasma to start, but he's on a grassland tile, so this is not a bad first choice. Or you go up here and improve this guy to make it even better and give it some production. It's probably not a bad option. Oh, because the city's on a hill and it's a city, we can actually move right through it. I. Hmm. I'm just going to build the farm here. I mean, he'll be a little damaged, but that's the only miasma tile I see. So, get out of the way early. And this explorer, where to send him? Um, there is a lot, lot, lot of ruins over here. So, I am naturally going to send him not that direction, but upwards. It's also useful just to explore your surrounding area. Get an idea for what's around you. Alright, so we do have a Xenomass right here. And more Flitstone. So this might look like a bit of a purity start. Resolin. Uh, the Silica is a supremacy indicator. Hopefully we're not playing Supremacy. I'd really love to show Purity off. But I'd also like to give Supremacy another shot, because I think I've changed up my Virtue teching a little bit and figured out what some of the weaknesses are with Supremacy, namely food. Food is the biggest we weakness. And I'd like to prioritize food-based elements in a Supremacy play. Um, that said, playing something unique like Purity or Harmony and showing you guys my build for that kind of stuff, also fun. So... We'll see what's going on as time goes on. Sorry my throat's so dry. Okay. Not bad. What happened? Did a quest. Just research binary. Alrighty, classic. Oh boy! Hi there, aliens. That is a lot of xenomass, and I'm not going to be able to get that. Ever. Uh, not ever, ever, but not now. Not happening. Let's just walk around it then. We get our next explorer in one turn. Where is he landing? Please no, not nearby. Yep, that's inevitable. Okay, so they landed nearby. Uh, let's see if we can beat them to that crash satellite. Maybe we can. Oh, if you guys have noticed, by the way, um, because of, you know, Men of War version 2, we actually, all our units have a name, and they're assigned to a company in a platoon. And they tell us our service length, the amount of damage they've taken, the amount of damage they've done. Very cool stuff. It doesn't track miasma damage, I don't think, though. So it's just combat damage. This does not, this is actually not, it doesn't work if you uh, put on quick combat. Bit weird, but, you know, that's how it is. So we're going to send our explorer down this way and start hitting these guys. 
Resource pod, real useful. Finished our first farm, and let's get building on that chitin. We finished our first explorer. I'm going to go for another one. This build really just wants you to have lots of explorers. Lots of expedition modules, as many as you can get. And we'll start with our little opener. Grab that resource pod. 19 research, nice and good. And move south. It's a lot of aliens. I really genuinely hope that there's not a nest. Just block my axis and it's just a random spawn. Right, let's just see how the pack try to make it there. That's their only explorer. We'll definitely beat them to this crash satellite, but... Oh boy, the pack are actually engaging the aliens. They might do it. Is that a siege worm? No, it's just... Raptor bug. Scary. Alright, let's get south. Hey, look at that! There's a nest! Ah, uh, that's bad. Um, we can try to sneak around south. We can maybe go that way. Let's try that. I'm not going that direction. Bad idea. That's just death. The other thing that's kind of fun about not playing with the, uh, the, I believe it's the ship option, that reveals all of the petroleum and titanium and geothermal at the start of the game, is you kind of get the fun of being able to discover that stuff, you know? It's actually enjoyable. I do like it. Alright, so let's grab this guy. Ooh, solar collector, there we go. Alright, so the strategy with this is, of course, wait until we get about five people, maybe six, and then we'll launch it. Till then, it just goes to sleep. I've seen people get two of them before, but I'm not going to push my luck. Let's see if we can get to that crash satellite. And let's grab this guy. Ooh, we beat him to it. Pack Explorer was just about to take it from us. No siree. And Firebase 1 just landed somewhere. Who knows where? Up there! Alright. Oh shit! I just gave something the wrong order. Ooh, the heck did I just give the wrong order? I have no clue. Alright. Well, let's just forget about that then. Oh, this guy. Yeah, he just spawned. Alright, so we're gonna send him this way. And let's get another worker, actually. Because we are actually outproducing our... Um, we are not basically creating tile improvements at the same rate as we're getting people. Uh, yeah, so let's grab another worker. It's actually very useful. I like to have multiple workers early. And you really do have to explode your work count around turn 60, 70, when things start to get big. How may the corporation serve All right, you? Alright, so the ARC just landed somewhere. Where? Where or where did the ARC land? All right, that's actually a good distance from us. I don't have to worry about them. That's nice. The two people you really don't want to land near you are the ARC and Brasilia. Because they will just... Ooh, crash satellite nearby. That's definitely a quest. Cultural burden. Okay. Let us snag that then. Before it gets taken from uh, by us. Just like from some random explorer. Let's build this farm. And start in this expedition module. This guy can just keep going south. I've seen a lot of floatstones, so that might be what we're doing. Uh, tons of resolin. It's definitely a hard indicator. And, you know, I do like the xenomass being close, though. One of my favorite things to do is a purity harmony kind of split. Very little harmony. Only the two, so you can get the, uh, the good harmony buildings. That guy thought he could beat us! Wow, that was a real threat. Good thing we turned around. That's a lot of floatstone. Let's get this guy down. Four billion year old world's worth of resources shared among a handful of people. We're gonna make a fortune. Chemistry here. might be my favorite tech, just because it's just like a really solid tech that gives you a bunch of everything. All right, so we're gonna swap right over to the recycler and prioritize that over the worker because I think we're actually making good time with the worker that we have, and uh, I want to get that recycler out as soon as possible. We have 80 health on him, and it'll be five turns. Good for me. Alright, let's get this guy south. Ideally, we can pick up the progenitor ruins, but that's kind of hard. 
it seems really far south. All right, so here's the choice. For me, this is pretty obvious. I want the three culture relics, especially as the African Union. That is three culture for every city you have. That is just unparalleled. I'm gonna pick up a virtue. Where are you getting the money, virtue? Yes, please. So when this guy finishes, and when this guy finishes, we will receive 30 science apiece. 60 science. Yeah. That is, in fact, 12 turns of what we're currently at. That is a lot of science. We'll basically get pioneering for free. That's what this strategy relies on. And, hopefully there's no aliens around. I really don't want to have to deal with them. Oh, this looks good. This looks promising. Alright, let's keep going. Keep an eye on our guys. Which one to grab first? Alien Skeleton has a good chance of giving you, um, not a good chance, but you do have a chance of getting, uh, you know, experience in your affinity, which is probably the best output that you get. Um, I believe it's even more than one level. It's like 13 experience, so it's better even than a Progenitor Ruin, if you get the right drop, which is the level. Alternatively, you can go Derelict Settlements here, and these guys have a chance of giving you a person in your city. Among other useful things, maybe you get some culture. <clears throat> Maybe you get a little bit of tech on something futuristic. We only have 80 health. And this guy is 5 turns. Let's just do this guy. We'll come back. We'll, we'll keep our explorers moving and on their way. Alright, so we got another farm going. And we have access to this fruit, finally. So let's go ahead and move him there. Alright, so our crash title here gave us uh, on, some tech on our way to Alien Sciences. Which almost guarantees that I will be doing a bit of a Harmony Purity split now. Uh, Alien Sciences, if you don't know, is the tech right here that gives you access to the Xeno Nursery, Xeno Fuel Plant, and Xeno Mass Well. So that's going to make that tech just a little bit cheaper and just better. Alright, so this crash site is done, and I believe we got a quest decision. Alright, so the question is, what do we want to start with, Purity or Harmony? Now this is hard. Um... I think this is definitely a supremacy, uh, sorry, a purity setup that I want to go through, and but I might want to start harmony, and there's a reason for that. Our explorers take no damage from my asthma, which means it's easier for me to just do the health kind of like craziness. Alternatively, um, this becomes a tile in harmony, uh, but on the other hand, we would get things we won't actually be able to work with, with Magan, which is a bit of a downside. Um, Ah, jeez. If you go Harmony early, you do have access to really strong stuff early. Like, you can get Xenomass wells up, you can get the Xeno Nursery as soon as physically possible, get the Xeno Fuel Plant, and then you can decide, after you have a very strong foundation of food and production and energy, that you get all of this. Wonderful tech. Wonderful, wonderful. You can decide, hey, you know what? Now let's go Purity, because we have all the stuff for it. And you won't get punished that hard. Um, because, you know, you still have all these early techs. Oops, that just changed. I'm thinking that's what we're probably going to do. So let's just make that decision. Oh boy, over right here. Let's go Harmony first. Ah, jeez. Don't make me regret this game. Alright, remove it. There you go, four. Uh, that only gave us four experience points, though. Oh well. I mean, I'm sure we'll be able to put that to good use once we get uh, the Xeno Nurseries and stuff up and running. Because there's actually a lot of Xenomass around for us to make good use of. Um, when you're playing Purity, Xeno, uh, Purity Harmony mix like this, you really only care about Xenomass tiles. You don't care about the amount. So three, good enough for me. And this is three, good enough for me. Four, good enough for... I don't care. And we can honestly just push up this way and acquire more tiles as we need them. Which is good. The, it seems like we've hit our time limit, guys, for the episode. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys come back and help me, you know, explore this grand new world of ours. Because we're really going to do some stuff to it. But until then, guys, take care, and I'll see you guys later.